the show. Congressman French Hill. Congressman, we always enjoy having you on. Let's move on to this. You know, the White House and Democrats keep blaming inflation on the supply chain crisis, but we've got this new development, and it's a dangerous one. There's a growing number of truck drivers now quitting because soaring gas prices are wiping out their paychecks. paychecks. They're talking $1,000 fill-ups at one time. We're already, you know, at the gas pump. We're already 80,000 truckers short. More than 70% of freight is transported by truck drivers. This is pretty dangerous stuff. Well, Liz, it's great to be back with you, and you're 100% right. There's nothing more integral to our supply chain logistics than having enough well-paid, competent truck drivers in this country. As you point out, we're short drivers now due to the baby boom generation retiring. Uh, many of the Biden mandates on employment, the vaccine mandates by the Biden administration, and now we're up 70% on diesel prices. If you're in a fleet, if you are a fleet driver for a big company like Walmart or J.B. Hunt, you probably have a price escalator in there for your diesel costs. It's up 70% from last year. But if you're an entrepreneur, a self-made truck driver working, uh, you're paying uh, almost uh, $2,000, $2,200 a week, up almost $900, and you're in the spot market for fuel. You don't have a hedge or any sophisticated support. Yeah. That's what's killing them. You know, it's an important point you make. I mean, truckers are so vital to our economy. It's a tough job that they do, right? We've got to hand it to the truck drivers what they do for us in our country. You know, hats off to them. But you remember when the energy secretary basically laughed out loud when she was asked about increasing U.S. production to help lower gas prices? Watch this. What is the grand home plan to increase oil production in America? <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> that is hilarious. Would that I had the magic wand on this. The message is we need to increase supply at this moment so that people will not see be hurt during the winter months. Just, did you hear that, Congressman? At one hand, she's saying, I don't have a magic wand. Well, yeah, they've been undercutting U.S. energy from day one. But then she's saying we need more supply. Look, this is crazy. I mean, her cackling does not solve this problem. They've been wrong since January 20th, 2021, when they canceled the Keystone Pipeline, canceled uh, all the regulatory benefits of building new pipelines, offering new federal lands for uh, exploration, not approving pipelines to export LNG, and in their budget, proposing $145 billion in new taxes on the energy industry. And yeah. finally, and significantly, Shalom. First and foremost, I give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, by Hashem Rekakorash. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, the word that calls God. In His name in Hebrew means He exists. And Yahweh Shah's name is on beyond Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And His name in Hebrew means He delivers by Hashem in the name Rekakorash is the Holy Spirit. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who will. Peace and blessings unto the sincere. I keep this push forward in the truth that the four corners of the earth. I want to say shalom to your brothers and keep pushing. And a double shalom unto the Israelites that look like the other nations. And a sincere aguatium. I want to say shalom to your brothers and sisters as well. My name is Dawa Dar from GMS Line, St. Louis Camp. And I'll come back out with another video. And I'm going to entitle this Famine is Approaching Us. All right. Famine is Approaching Us. And according to the scriptures, you got two types of famine. You got the famine of the word, which is more important than the famine of food. But, hey, that's the second type of famine, the famine of food. All right. And you're going to have to have both 
in those days in order to be able to, to sustain yourself. But the main type of famine is, is going to be the famine of the word. All right. And it's already prophesied that two thirds of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. Y'all yeah, not going to make it. Why? Because you don't want to get down with the program of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai. Because the Lord got his prophets out here. And he showing you what he's about to do. And y'all not taking heed to the warning. So, hey, that's on y'all. So, when these players come, that's why the Lord said they're going to call upon me. But hey, he ain't going to answer. Because, hey, the Lord already knows what's going to happen. The Lord is in complete control over everything that's going on in the world. Contrary to popular belief. Yeah, the devil, he got kicked out of heaven. And uh, the devil... Got power too, which you know, Satan, the spiritual demon, Satan does have power, you know, because the Lord gave him power, all right, because the Lord controls the spiritual demon, Satan. But the most high is in control of everything, he created good and evil, all right. And look, this is just only the beginning, this is the beginning of the end, because Jacob's trouble is a time period within itself, all right. You got the time period of teaching. Which the apostles and elders been out there for damn near 40 years. All right. The truth came on the earth in what? Uh, 1969. You see? And it's been on earth ever since then. And because the gathering of the elect started as soon as those men started teaching. All right. And the elect come from all different forms of life. All right. But hey, without further ado, let's go and hop into the scriptures. So this is Matthew 24 and 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sakes, those days shall be shortened. All right? As a matter of fact, I'm going to start at 21. For then should be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor shall ever be. All right, so great tribulation. All right, and tribulation is well hardships, because like, hardships is coming. It's already hard now, you know, and that's why the scripture says, "Woe unto these uh, women," because um, hey, these women mourn having no bridegroom or no husband. All right, and if they do got a husband, the nigga broke. All right, and because a lot of these Americans, <clears throat> a lot of us can't even afford rent. We can't even afford to live by ourselves. All right. So let's go over here to go over to the book of Luke. Twenty one and fifteen in the reach, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gain say nor resist, right? So the Lord, he gave us a mouth and wisdom. And I hey, can't none of these people beat us or combat or refute what we say because it is the truth. All right? See, like, the truth is not up for interpretation. That's just what it is. It's factual. We had um, a guy that came up talking about some how the truth is universal, you know? Like, basically saying there's different interpretations of the uh, scriptures, and that's, that's, that's not true at all. All right, because hey, it's a straight gate. Because there's only one way to enter in, but you know you got certain men that crept it unaware. Also, they came through, like the back door, and then they're not even in the right attire. All right, and those um, those phonies will be found out that like, they men of the Lord and not. All right, <clears throat> so. Let's go over here to Amos. Eight and eleven, and it reads, Behold, the days come, say the Lord power, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east, they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. And that day should a fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. They that swear by the sin of Samaria, and say, Thy God, O Don, liveth the manner of Bathsheba liveth. 
even they shall fall and never rise up again, right? So these people, they're going to be scrambling. They're going to be trying to seek uh, the word of the Lord because they didn't think that the Lord was going to come back in their lifetime. All right, because they, you ask a so-called Christian, do they think the Lord has come back in a lifetime? One, they're going to say no. And, and two, they're going to look at you like you're crazy for even asking that. Because they secretly want this place to continue going on. All right. They want to chase a dream and chase the bag and all this other nonsense that uh, this place has to offer. Which really is not really offering nothing. All right. But you two thirds, you nation of Israel are blind. All right. And I find it the most funniest thing for a Christian to tell a man of the Lord that he blind. <laughs> All right. Hey, it's ironic. Because these Christians, they actually think that they woke. But now y'all in a deep, deep, deep sleep. Y'all not even conscious at all. All right, in the in the REM cycle, <laughs> rapid eye movement of the sleep cycle, that's when you uh dreaming. A lot of you um, Israelites say, "Yeah, just straight dreaming, man. Shit, and don't want to wake up. All right, because a reality gonna set in a uh, hard for you Israelites out there, hard. All right, and you're not gonna be able to cope with it because you so used to." Yeah, we gonna be all right, and and pretending that everything okay, and not dealing with reality because you don't, um, because you're not mature enough to deal with reality. Because hey, this truth, hey, it brings forth what maturity. It grows you up, all right. Because a lot of our people are little boys and little girls, and grown man and women and old man and women bodies. All right. <clears throat> and, hey, it's not it's not going to be pretty out here, man. It's not going to be pretty. It's about to get gruesome. So we'll go over here to the Apocrypha of the book of Ecclesiasticus 3 and 24. For me, you are deceived by their own vain opinion. And the evil suspicion has overthrown our judgment. Right. So many are deceived by their own vain opinion. All right. And. Yeah. And that's what blinds our own people. Like here it is. You can show them in the Bible all day long. Where in it that, that they going off. But hey, they don't. Um, They don't understand. Like they don't understand that. Hey, this place is over, man. And we already done seen it, right? Because, hey, the trucks in this place are the food source. If there's no more truckers, you know, that lady, she said 80,000. Right? So you already got 10,000 cattle dead that's over there in Kansas. And you got certain truck drivers that, that carry livestock, all right, and breed them just to keep the beef up in America, all right? And now... um, you got, you had the, uh, the pandemic and like these gas prices are soaring. So now, uh, these a lot of these truck drivers are just saying, "Hey, this is, this is whack, basically." All right, I'm not really making a profit, like especially if you own your own truck, and what you got certain apps to, to write off your. Like, you know, how much gas money you spend on a truck and all that. Um, and they uh, pay you taxes. You know, you can write it off in your taxes in order to get more money. But shit, they can't even do that because it's still not worth it. It's still not the money you spend versus the money that you're getting off out of it. You're not really getting a profit. You like, it's either little to no profit. You breaking dead even. And the truck driver's like, oh, hell nah. Like, it's not even worth it. Hey, because hey, even Trump said when uh, Biden get in the office, you're going to have gas is what, five, six dollars and shit. He ain't lying. Shit, it's even more than that. Seven dollars. All right. And doing this, um, 
this pandemic where a lot of people was all like, oh, hell no, I'm not even, I'm not even driving, man. And yeah, it's only going to get worse. Like, this is the beginning of the end. All right. The time was Jacob's trouble that we've been telling you about. All right. And hey, all of us are going to be in it. That's why the scripture said he didn't do it to the end. The same shall be saved. All right. Because even the men of the Lord are going to have to endure what's about to come. Hey, and we, and shit, and we confident. You know, we confident. You know, it's, it's you other people that should be scared. All right. There's you other people that should be scared. So this is go to the book of Revelation, chapter six. And five. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see and behold. And I beheld. And lo, a black horse, and he that settled him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the soil in the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see, right? So that basically represents the, um, the harvest and the food source, and here it is. Um, overpriced, you know, hyperinflation. All right. So let's keep reading. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed him. And power was given unto them over the four part of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. Right. So, hey, that's what's coming. You know, because these zoo animals uh going to get out. All right. There ain't going to be no food out here. And, yeah, uh, with the sword, because, you know, you got these militia groups and these... Uh, white supremacist groups is out here that's been stocking up on guns and food. They have all these different uh, hideouts and bug out bags. Like uh, they show you that in video games. Like um, like The Last of Us. They show you that in uh, movies like The Walking Dead, uh, The Road. Um, all those movies. Uh, I Am Legend. All right. And yeah, it's about to get, man, it's about to get straight gruesome out here. All right? You people, you have no idea what's about to get ready to go down. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of the Most High, for a testimony which they held. Yeah, so the altar of them that were slain for the Most High. All right? Which, uh, that's the men the Lord is going to. It's going to die in these coming days. All right, because hey, most of us are going to um, going to escape. And not a hair of our head going to get touched at all. But hey, some of us going to have to uh, get put to death for this truth. And, hey, so be it. It is what it is. You know, just as long as we get to the other side, because hey, we're not going to even remember um, the pain that we had to suffer. You know, it's going to be like a like, like a faint memory, right? Because everything in the kingdom is going to be so great and well put together that it's going to be just, just like a bad dream, waking up from a bad dream, all right? And verse 10, and they cry with a loud voice saying, how long, O Lord? Holy and true, does thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes are given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also and their brethren should be killed as they were killed. 
should be fulfilled. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And right, we're seeing all these different signs in the heavens, um, solar eclipse, lunar eclipse, red moons, and the stars fell from fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree catches her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Yeah, so that's that's what those uh, mushroom clouds. All right. So let's look at that. That yeah, mushroom clouds that's um, about to get ready and come through here. Yeah, and they kind of like a scroll. All right. A tired scroll. Let's see if I can look up that tired scroll. Yeah. Let's see, heaven should depart like a scroll, like a scroll unraveling. All right. So they described it the best way as they could. Because uh, hey, those nuclear missiles, they're going to sh basically shift the whole world. All right. Like the tectonic plates, because they even during the flood, you had that uh, the earth moved. All right. So the earth uh, separated. And because um, at one point in time, hey, the whole earth was just one big. Uh, land mass, but during the time of the flood, it all separated. All right, and that's and that's about to happen again, but this time it's gonna be with fire. <laughs> so, I keep about to need to get ready because um, hey, this is it. You know, it's time to buckle down. And, hey, the water you hard by Shmuel that we ain't gotta. We ain't gonna have to go through this shit no more. Go through different reincarnations and see our people in a lower state and have have our fathers leave us and you know getting abused and getting into it with niggas at school and all that and our wives. Alright. Having power over us, so this is Daniel 2 and 40. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron and breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but it shall be in it of the strength of iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. All right. And that's talking about America, hey, because this kingdom is strong, but then again, it's weak at the same time. As far as like the morale and how people carry themselves and how people think that life is supposed to be, hey, it's weak. All right. And it's obvious that it's failing because hey, um, depression and suicidal thoughts is at an all time high. Uh, especially after the pandemic where people were sitting in the house and basically um, they had to look in the mirror and you in the house for a while and you trapped me with, with your own thoughts and you like, damn, I messed up. All right. And that's what people don't want to deal with. Most people don't want to deal with reality. All right. Because reality is going to sink in one way or another. You know. The easy way or the hard way. For the men of the Lord, hey, it was um, it was the easy way because they we accepted like okay, this is the truth, all right, and we did the 
know, we counted the costs and like all the precautions that we're going to have to face and we're going to have to deal with. Hey, and that's better than what you people got because, man, the Lord says it's going to happen eventually. You know, and hey, hey, and that's what we're looking for. But you Christians, y'all not looking for that. Y'all trying to stay here and shit, but we not. Let's read on. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, in even this place, America is divided. All right. A white, white ring, left wing. All right. Democrats, uh, Republicans. All right. In the days of these kings that the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. All right. And... Uh, that kingdom is uh, the kingdom of heaven. And that's ran by who you people ignorantly call Jesus Christ. And his real name in Hebrew is Yahweh Shai. I mean, he saves. He delivers. All right. And shit, I can't wait. Because, man, this kingdom is whack, man. Especially when you know how things are supposed to be ran and how earth and um, you as a man are supposed to be. And like how to like how um, you supposed to deal with your woman and all that supposed to be ran at you like man I want to get up out of this place you know Daniel 7 and 18 But the sins of the Most High shall take the kingdom And possess the kingdom forever Even forever and ever Right So yeah we gonna possess the kingdom forever Even forever and ever Yeah cause um Hey this kingdom is about to get ready to fall Jeremiah 30 and 7 Last for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even a time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. All right, but you're going to be saved out of it. All right. Verse 8 For it shall come to pass, said the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. For they shall serve the Lord their God, and David the king, whom I will raise up unto them yeah yeah so hey cause right now you saw Edom and he got our neck in a chain you know he got his foot on our neck alright when you control somebody's neck you control them alright control their center of gravity control their breathing alright and the serpent he already got you out two thirds and yeah, he putting a squeeze and guess what you know, you're losing consciousness, which you really never had it. But hey, it's like uh, you know, you, you know, like somebody getting smothered in their sleep, <laughs> like you, like you, uh, like you alive, but you sleep. All right, and somebody come in and put and put the pillow on your face and smother you, then you die. That's pretty much what the Lord is gonna allow Esau Edom to do to you two thirds, man. Cause you, you you you're not getting it. All right. But yeah, man, it's crazy, man. It's about to. People have no idea, man. Yeah, here it is. 
This is 2 Kings 6 and 24. And it came to pass after this that Benadad, king of Syria, gathered all his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria. And behold, they besieged it until the ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver and the fourth part of a calf of doves dung for five pieces of silver. <laughs> And yeah, like eating a calf's head is not is not something that you want to do, all right? And um, like when people eat calf's head, they they pretty much desperate for food because you got all different types of the cow's body that you can eat. You know, you got the uh, legs, the ribs, all right, making beef. Like make clothes out of that and all that. It says, yeah, and for dung, shit, doo for five pieces of silver. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help my lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord does not help thee, when shall I help thee? Out of the barn floor or out of the wine press? And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? So what's the matter? She answered, This woman said unto me, Give thy son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son that we may eat him. And she hath hid her son. And it came to pass when, when the king heard the words of the woman, that he ran his clothes, and he passed by upon the wall and the people looked, and behold, he had sackcloth put thin upon his flesh. All right. So, that, so that's the type of shit that's about to get ready to happen, you know, cannibalism. Because uh, it don't take a few days, like hey, like a few days, you know, because Jake, cause Jake could tell you, yeah, I got to eat, I got to eat. All right. So these people, man, you, you don't have no damn faith, man. And it's going to be shown. Since uh, hey, all foods is clean, what what the fuck you gonna do? You gonna uh, try try to justify eating human flesh? And that's even what Boosie said, right? Do not eat the animal, son. I eat children, people, all that. That, that nigga is gonna eat his kids, all right? So yeah, man. So uh, I'm going to end it off with that. I want to say, call a hello. I'm like, how about you, Miao Shai? Shimmer Kakwara, Shalom. Hope that was edifying. And a Bible ball. On to the next one.